Hello everyone, welcome to Baiju's IAS in another series of biography where we have come with a very important social reformer, Keshav Chandra Sen, a 19th century philosopher, social reformer, and Brahmo Samaj leader. He was a very important and prominent social and religious reformer from Kolkata. In those days, he had attempted to incorporate the Christian theology within the framework of Hindu thought. He condemned child marriage and was instrumental in having the marriage rights of his society reorganized by law in 1872. Apart from this, a great advocate of widow remarriage, intercaste marriages, this man had also founded a universal religion known as Nababidhan, which translates to new dispensation. So let us look at the life of this great man. As you can see, he was born on 19th November 1838 in the Bengal Presidency. His father, Pierre Mohan, had passed at the age when he was only 10 years old. Now, he was then brought up by his uncle and he started attending the Bengali Patshala, that is the elementary school, and later joined the Hindu College in 1845. We all have studied 1845, this college, Hindu College, was established by Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Now, if you look at his early life, his primary concern was the quest for universal religion. So, this is his primary objective in the life in the initial days. When he was studying in Hindu college, he was deeply interested in the Unitarian theological and social gospels that were propounded in the writings of Theodore Parker and F.W. Newman. Now, please understand, what exactly is Unitarian theologism? Let us understand this ideology a bit. See, Unitarianism is an open-minded and individualistic approach to religion that gives scope for a very wide range of beliefs and doubts. Under this, religious freedom for each individual is at the heart of this particular ideology. Everyone is free to search for meaning in life in a responsible way and to reach their own conclusions. Now, Keshav Chandra Sen became convinced of the validity of this Unitarian social ideology under the influence of C.H.A. Dal in those days. He was an American Unitarian missionary. Apart from this, Mr. Sen also established the Goodwill Fraternity, which was a Unitarian religious society for the students, as you can see here. Apart from this, he also for a very small period, for a brief period, had become the secretary of the Asiatic Society in 1854. Now, as far as his professional life was concerned, he started working as a clerk in a bank. Later, he resigned from this post to completely devote himself to literature and philosophy. Now, as we all know, and in the very beginning, I told you that Keshav Chandra Sen was associated with Brahmo Samaj. In those days, Brahmo Samaj was being led by Devendra Nath Tagore, father of Ravind Nath Tagore. At this point of time, Keshav Chandra Sen got fascinated by the idea of monotheist Vedantism, which was being propounded by Devendra Nath Tagore. And around 1857, he joined this Samaj. Now, I don't have to tell about the Samaj because we have already seen this Samaj was started by Raja Ram Mohan Roy. At this moment, he also started following the beliefs and the practices of Vedanta along with belief in one God. So, your monotheist Vedantism is the idea of following Vedanta's philosophy along with belief in one God, that is monotheist, one God. Now, as you all can understand, at this moment, when Keshav Chandra Sen arrived, as far as the Samaj was concerned, his arrival was seen as a breath of fresh air. Because with his coming up, what happened was that there was introduction of many new ideas and activities as far as the Samaj was concerned. Sen started founding many associations, for example, the Sangat Sabha around 1860. This meant Believers Association 
now what was the purpose of this particular sabha this sabha met weekly for some discussions now after studying the hindu and christian writings his disciples realized the need to put the principles into practice and this led them to abandon the caste and the sacred thread apart from this they started practicing temperance and worked for the equality of women around the same period or time keshav chandra sen also started indian mirror now indian mirror it became an organ of the brahmo samaj through which he started spreading the anti sectarian and universal religious ideas later around 1862 when devendranath tagore is yet leading brahmo samaj he was appointed as the acharya acharya is preceptor so he has been identified or appointed as acharya of the samaj around this period of time and he introduced regular and systematic missionary work in the samaj now from the time he joined in 1857 to 1866 some 31 branches of the samaj were established so you can see in 9 years during his association with the samaj 31 different branches of the samaj were established throughout the country now as we have already talked about keshav chandra sen slightly about his ideas on caste system untouchability etc you can see once he became the acharya of this samaj he started or he insisted that caste system should be abolished similarly he wants untouchability to be abolished he is working against the child marriages which you will see later will be slightly controversial and that i'm going to talk to you within a minute or two apart from this he opposes polygamy as you all know polygamy is that anyone has more than one partner he is opposing that also he became a propagator of vido and the intercaste marriages at this point of time we already know before him people like ishwar chandra vidya sagar have been the great proponent of the vido remarriages now acharya keshav chandra sen he is also promoting and has become a propagator of such marriages at this moment the first brahmo vido and intercaste marriages also took place in august 1862 and 1864 respectively so you can see 1862 the first brahmo vido marriage and 1864 the first brahmo intercaste marriages had taken place apart from this keshav chandra sen is hugely concerned in those days with women's education and it became the vital agenda of the keshav chandra sen's control brahm bandhu sabha which was started in 1863 so he is working for women's education also actively supporting the educational efforts of the organizers of brahm bodhini sabha and brahm bodhini patrika and guided the brahmo hitayasini sabha to improve the moral and material condition of women so you can see the all the three bodies which i just now named brahmo bodhini sabha brahm bodhini patrika brahmo hitayasini sabha they all are mentioned so keshav chandra sen has given huge support to all these bodies in those days now as i said this man got associated with brahmo sabha in around 1857 we saw it in the last slide at this moment there are now differences growing between devendranath tagore and keshav chandra sen so let us look at what were the differences about see what has happened is these differences ultimately will lead to the split in brahmo samaj so let us look devendranath tagore versus keshav chandra sen why these differences have cropped up keshav chandra sen's certain ideas were perceived as too radical by devendranath tagore he was in that sense if i we call it like that he was conservative in that sense the ideas of cosmopolitanism of the samaj's meeting by inclusion of teachings from all religions this was not liked by devendranath tagore similarly the views the strong views against the caste system that Keshav Chandra Sen had propagated was again not liked by Devendranath Tagore 
and finally the open support to inter-caste marriages caused a huge rift between Devendranath Tagore and Keshav Chandra Sen. Devendranath Tagore is not approving of any radical changes. Now please understand, why is he not approving of any radical changes? Because he didn't want to hurt the national sentiment and alienate the greater Hindu population on these issues. So you have to understand, at that moment Devendranath Tagore thinks that the time is not ripe to do these things. And that's why he does not want to bring these things ahead. In turn, Keshav Chandra Sen at this moment is accusing Devendranath Tagore of Indianizing Brahmoism and making it another Hindu sect. So you can understand clearly that now there is a division. The young Brahmos who are now under the leadership of Keshav Chandra Sen, they form a Pratinidhi Sabha in 1864. Now, this new Sabha which has been formed, what are they demanding? The demands of this new Sabha is that there should be religious independence as well as democratic and constitutional control over the Samaj's affairs. So please understand very clearly. At this moment, this new Samaj, they are still talking about, or this Sabha that we talked about, Pratinidhi Sabha, they are still talking about Brahmo Samaj. They are saying that this Samaj or Sabha, Brahmo Samaj, which is right now under the control of Devinnath Tagore, should be further democratized. As you can understand, Devinnath Tagore did not yield and the formal break between them, that is Keshav Chandra Sen and Devinnath Tagore, took place on 15th November 1866. So you can understand here, this was the first division of Brahmo Samaj. And now, Keshav Chandra Sen named his Samaj Bharat Varshiya Brahma Samaj. In English, if you translate it, it becomes Brahmo Samaj of India. Whereas the old association that was under Devin Tagore came to be known as Adi Brahmo Samaj. As you can understand, Adi means original. So the original Samaj is under Devinna Tagore and the new body is being named as the Bharat Varshiya Brahmo Samaj which would be under Keshav Chandra Sen. Let us now look at the development of Keshav Chandra Sen as a dramatic leader. Now if you see here, he has founded his own Samaj. We saw just now the Samaj's name is Bharat Varshiya Brahmo Samaj. And under this Samaj, he is growing as a leader and is winning converts primarily from the villages and the towns of East Bengal. At this moment, this led to various religious conflicts between the Samaj and the Hindu orthodoxy. You can understand whenever such things will happen, this will lead to conflicts between the old ideas and the new proponents. And around this period of time, by 1868, the majority of the 65 branches of the Samaj in Eastern India joined the new Samaj, that is the Brahmo Samaj of India. As you can see, most of these Samajas or the branches are joining this new body. And by 1872, Saints organization had extended through Bihar, the United Provinces as well as Punjab. Samaj is hugely penetrating itself in Assam, Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, of course, it also had some limited influence in the South as well as the West. So you can understand here that now at this moment, that is around 1872, of the 101 Samads that existed at that period of time, majority of them were located in Bengal and others were largely rested on the communities of Bengalis who had travelled outside of their province to find employment. So as you can understand at this moment, Brahmo Samaj under the leadership of Keshav Chandra Sen has started to grow rapidly, has gone in many states like Bihar, UP, Punjab, even in areas like South India and Western India, it has got some limited traction at this point of time. And ultimately, you can see that whenever they are outside Bengal, it is mostly amongst the Bengalis who had lived or who had left Bengal at this moment for employment opportunities where this new Samaj had become very, very popular and strong. Now, around 1870, 
Keshav Chandra Sen left for England. As you can understand, he had gone over there to tour, to lecture about this religion and etc. And here he met the Queen Victoria. On his return from England, he demonstrated an increased interest in social action and intended to restructure the societal customs of Bengalis. Now, at this moment, he organizes the Indian Reform Association. Now, he organized the Indian Reform Association to improve the life of the peasants. Apart from this, in those days, in order to reach them, he published a journal, Sulab Samachar. This was written in simple Bengali prose in those days. Apart from this, the activity of this reform association had five major aspects. What are those? Number one, charity. Number two, temperance. Number three, improvement of women's material and social conditions. Number four, mass education. Please see here, mass education through mother tongue. And fifth, and the last is economic reading materials. Through that, they are trying to have the mass education propagated at this point of time. Lastly, you have to understand, as I was saying a few minutes back, that on the issue of child marriage, there was some controversy attached to Keshav Chandra Sen. What was that controversy all about? See, basically, in the early 1870s, this Brahmo Samaj, which was led by Keshav Chandra Sen, saw another division. It was rocked by a controversy over a legislative proposal that was known as the Brahmo Marriage Act. Now, please understand what this act is about. This act wanted to legalize the Brahmo marriages, but did so by declaring that Brahmos were not Hindus and hence were not subjected to the Hindu law. Now, they fought for this change as it would have provided a civil marriage freed from Hindu rituals as well as legalization of the intercaste marriages. Apart from that, there were more controversies at this moment of time with regards to the role of women. There were many radicals at this point of time. For example, Durga Mohan, he proposed that women should be allowed to sit with their relatives during services at the Brahmo temples. And Sain argued against this and following this debate, turned away from his advocacy of social change. Now, please understand, we are moving towards the split in Brahmo Samaj. So you can understand the backdrop of how this split is happening at this point of time. Later, there will be another controversy with regards to the marriages of the daughter of Keshav Chandra Sen, which we are going to see in a minute. Now, by 1875-76, Keshav Chandra Sen started focusing on a new type of Brahmoism that contained elements of religious experience as well as Shaktism. Shaktism is the worship of female power. Now, at this part of time, Keshav Chandra Sen had got hugely influenced by Ramakrishna Paramhans, the Bengali mystic whom he had met and he started playing a great role in Keshav Chandra Sen's involvement in devotional worship. This further deepened the rift between the Samaj and many started questioning the role of Keshav Chandra Sen as far as the Samaj was concerned. Now, again, if you see, this is again talking about the democratization of the, of the Samaj, which they had asked earlier. Now, their critics, that is the critics of Keshav Chandra Sen, they are demanding that there should be creation of a constitution and some degree of representation for the members of the Samaj. So you can see here, now the members, they are questioning Keshav Chandra Sen. And the final thing here happened around February 1878, when Keshav Chandra Sen announced the marriage of his daughter to the son of Maharaja of Kuch Bihar. Now you can understand here. Throughout his life, this man had against or had been against the child marriage and now he himself has got his daughter married as a child his daughter is child at this moment so he has himself violated the brahmo marriage act because the age of his daughter was 13 at this point of time 
and the age of the prince was 15. So you can understand many of his supporters at this point of time, they rejected his leadership. They said, we are leaving your leadership, we are going out of your Samaj and they formulated or formed a Sadharan Brahmo Samaj on 15th May 1878. One of his erstwhile supporter and founding member of the previous association known as A.M. Bose left the body and formulated or formed the Sadharan Brahmo Samaj at this point of time. Finally, in February 1880, he called upon his supporters to create a religious revival by leading a procession through the streets of Calcutta. Equipped with flags, musical instruments and singing hymns, Sain and his disciples marched in the fashion of Chaitanya's devotional Vaishnavism at this point of time. Sain started attempting to synthesize the world's religions, blending elements of different faith into a single set of rituals and beliefs. We have already said this. What did he form? He formed the Nab Bidhan, also known as New Dispensation in 1881. This new dispensation wanted or intended to incorporate the best principles of Christianity with Hinduism. While many members of Brahmo Samaj rejected it, many appreciated it as well. Because his idea of synthesization of the best principles of both these religions was too radical for that period of time. And that's why his critics, they accuse Sain of straying away from the core ideologies of the Samaj, whereas his supporters opined that he was realizing the philosophy of the universal religion that was propounded by none other than Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Finally, this great man, he passed away on 8th January, aged just 45 in Calcutta. But throughout his life, though he lived a very short life, only for around 45 years of age he lived. But in those 45 years, he did a lot and he is one of the greatest visionaries of 19th century India. That's all. Thank you. For more videos, log on to the Baiju's app.